Well, howdy. It's Monday, May 25th, Memorial Day. It's 5.10 p.m. here at Indian Lake Estates. And when it's Memorial Day, I think of my late dad. If you like a good read, do a search for Private First Class Robert Edward Morris in the little white search box on the blog for a good read. Amazing story. Got his arm shot off on Okinawa. Anyway, by May 19th, the chicks were born on the 9th and 10th, so they were 10 and 11 days old, and I was getting a little bored of photographing them. Same stuff. It was a cloudy morning. I headed down to the lake, and off to the right of the main road, Park Drive, I saw the female sitting in the grass, so I knew immediately that the two chicks were underneath her or tucked in her feathers in the back here. And this is the best exposure of the lot today. Some of the chicks will be pretty good, but I went a little dark after this. And this is easily savable. These grasses here, not the greatest thing. This one, this one, you know, but the wildflowers are positioned nicely. And I did that by scooching to my right or my left. I was sitting on the ground behind the GIT 404L with the 600 Sony F4 and the 7R4 using tracking AF. Gives a little bit of an alert posture. Maybe a vulture flew over. And still liking the, the, uh, the wildflowers and hoping that one of the chicks will sit up or both of them on the back of the bird. Little different posture. She pulls her head up a little now. This little dirt patch and the head intersects it. Didn't do that here. I like this better, but I do like the alert posture. So can't have everything. And then the chick comes out. Now the wonderful part of using Sony tracking is that I had had the point here on the bird's face. When the mother looked to the right, if that is the mother, then I simply just move the camera, the lens to the right, and the AF stays on the adult's face. So you see from here to here, I fixed my exposure. I really like this one. The mother's looking left, the baby's looking right. Got our wildflowers, and none of these things really come into play. And then we have the double stare down. I'll probably lose this because that could either be with a little tighter crop or using content aware fill. But when it's really bright like that, it becomes obtrusive. Now, I didn't feel like laying down in the red grass, so I lowered my tripod flat and I pulled out the rear screen of the A7R4 and made a few pictures. I like, I like this one way better than this one because I see the top of this tree here. And it's a beautiful view. Let's see, where are we? We were here. Then the chicks went back under. So I got lower. And then, again, using the rear screen and using tracking AF, here I'll lose this one. Real simple. Circle that with the patch tool and hit shift delete. It's gone. Perfect exposure here. More on that tracking. Where you just put the tracking on the bird's face and you can put it anywhere in the frame you want and it'll stay on the bird's face. Now the chicks come out, but unfortunately they come up right in the middle of these grasses. It'd be a bunch of work to lose some of these. Looks like there's a grass through the eye. We could fix that. But the reason I probably won't work on this is that this little one, if it had turned a little bit more towards us, I'd probably be working that one. Now the mother, what happens is when, when the mate flies in, the other adult or a vulture flies over or God forbid an eagle, they'll start to call. 
And you might say, well, the nictitating membrane ruins this. Yeah, easy just to take that eye with a quick mask and bring it into this frame, should you choose. Look at the difference in head angle here. Head slightly turned away and slightly towards us and a little more clear. So you may see this one on the blog with the eye from, from this frame. And the chicks are talking to each other, but yeah, look, there's this little butt. And then mother stands up and walks away and the kids are going, where are you going? Where are you going? And with the A7R4, this will make a beautiful picture crop from here to here to here to here. And thank you, Don. We'll get back to you in a little bit. <laughs> it's funny. I remembered to turn off to shut email. I started to do a Camtasia video. Somebody called on my cell phone. Then I went back to email and forgot to shut it. So that's why we saw that Don wrote. In any case, this will be a nice crop. Should have been a brighter exposure. Now I'm closer. They're feeding. They're coming towards me. I don't have to worry about sun angle because it's cloudy bright. I have a nice exposure. Highlights to the right. I don't know what this thing is here, but I don't like it. The next frame, it sort of goes away. This guy is looking up right at us. Love that. And then this one, I like this one better with the raised foot. This out of focus grass will definitely go along with a few others. And now I'm falling into the tracking trap. Flexible tracking, spot, medium, I love, put it anywhere. But the thing is, the bird stood up taller, and I've really clipped the virtual feet here. The virtual feet are the feet as if you could see them through the grasses. So I'm working with it. I do it worse here. Same thing. I needed to point the camera down to give room for the virtual feet. Then it gets worse. This guy does a, a beautiful wing stretch. Now you see it got a little bit darker. Yeah, where's the ISO? It's still at 800, so we know it got darker. Because I was at a 500 F4 at 800, it was good. Now it's a 400 F4 at 800, and it's a little bit under. But the fact is that I messed up by not pointing the, ca the lens down. It would have held focus on the face. So yes, I can expand canvas and add a little bit to the bottom, but it's a pain. And I'm just practicing with it and getting better, but sometimes it's so convenient you forget to look down. Same thing here a little bit, just trying to get the second bird in the background. And then the two chicks come together and I'm going to ask you to pick a favorite of these by looking at the file number 1666 here. This bird could turn its head towards us a little bit. Same thing. Then they start playing and I'm lucky that I'm fitting them in the frame. And they're sort of doing kissy. So they're getting along much better than <laughs> five minutes when, when the mother stood up on the smaller chick you saw that one of the last vlogs, the, the nest may try to beat the hell out of the newborn, but they're now good friends. So yeah, interesting, but boy, with this bird turned away, just not interesting. You know, some of these grasses are bad luck, but you could get rid of the white ones, get rid of this. Once I pick one, now they're sort of biting each other. And there's a nice pose with the two of them. Still have to lose one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine grasses. Now I'm just squeezing them in the frame. So yeah, I could expand canvas a little. Not much I could do with a fixed focal length lens, but I'm wanting to use the 600 in low light so I can work at f4. 
Now he's goosing them on the neck. Really good exposure. Notice here I have lots of room below the feet. Get rid of this mess here. Still cute, still cute. So whichever one you like best, pick one. I actually like this one better than this. The front bird is has his head towards us just a fraction more here. And I like this one better than this one for the same reason. Best head angle right here. Now the two of them in the flowers, pretty cool. And that's it. We are done. So Sony folks, buy the guide. We worked hard. If you spend 3000 bucks on a camera, you certainly want to know how to use it. As far as all the processing, the current Burgess Art Workflow e-guide, aka Digital Basics 2. And we thank you for uh, the orders during this ridiculous time. Lots of orders in the store. And lastly, I'm going to be at the Soto on Tuesday afternoon through this Saturday morning, May 30th. So if you're interested in any inexpensive in the field sessions, one, two, three, four, any as much as you like or as little, shoot me an email to the Sam and Maya's grandpa address. Love you much.